Hey everyone, welcome to the optional project video for NumPy reshaping and indexing. Let's get started. We already have NumPy imported, so let's go ahead and make that sample array from the last video. But this time, instead of using the size 6, let's try to use the size of 16. So we'll say NumPy array as a function, two square brackets, and then 1 through 4, 5 through 8, 9 through 12, and then 13 through 16. So now we have an array of the size 16. Let's think about how many different ways we could reshape this array. We'll say array B is equal to array A. We'll use that reshape method as a function. And now let's go over the different shapes that we can make this array. We could do 1 and 16. We could do 2 and 8. 4 and 4 is already the shape of our array. We could do 8 and 2, and then we could do 16 and 1. 1 and 16 and 16 and 1 are the same thing because they're only one dimensional along one axis. So you just have the values listed out 1 through 16. So let's make this into two rows and eight columns. To do this, we'll say 2 and 8. And then we'll print array B. We'll open a command prompt or a terminal. And we'll execute the script using python3 numpy indexing project.py. So we get two rows with each one having a length of eight. What do you think happens if we transpose the original array A? If we say array C is equal to array A, and then we'll use that method transpose, which is a capital T, and then we'll print array C. We'll execute this. And now we get the new array that we just transposed. Each of the rows values now go into the columns and each of the columns values go into each row. If you were to transpose this array again, then you would go back to the original array. We can see this by adding the transpose method to our print array and then we'll execute again. Now we return the array back to the original form by transposing it twice. Now let's talk about indexing values out. So we already saw that we can index values out using square brackets. We'll say print array C and pass in those square brackets. Think about for a moment how we could return two rows from our NumPy array. Let's say that we wanted the first one and the second one. We already know how we can return the first one. We can use a zero. But now, if we wanted to return the second one as well, we couldn't just put a one here. Because now we're returning one value. We're returning the first row and the second value in that row. Instead, we could do this. We could put a comma here and then type array C Again, the print function can take multiple arguments, so we're just indexing the same array twice, pulling two rows. We'll print this, and now we've returned both of those rows. NumPy also supports negative indexing just like Python. So let's say that we wanted to pull out this four value in our NumPy array. To do that, we could say print, and now this one was the first array, so array A, we'll pass that here, array A. It's in the first row, so we could say a zero for that value. And to pull out the last value in that row, we could just say negative one. That's because we're counting backwards from the end. So negative one would be here. We'll print this and we should be returned a four, which is what we get. If you wanted the last row in the last column, you could change this from zero to negative one. So now we should be returned 16. We'll print this. And the same slicing methods that are available in Python, we can use in our NumPy array as well. We'll talk about more advanced indexing methods in the upcoming videos. However, for this project, let's see if you can return the second column using negative indexing. Once you get that second column, see if you can do a separate operation to pull out the number 10. To get you started, to pull out the second column using negative indexing, we would start with the array A, square brackets, and we want a column value, so we want every row value at a certain position. Then I'll let you figure out the rest. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and I'll try to help you out. I'll see you in the next lesson.